Red Sharks NAB coverage is brought to you by So Paul, what's new this year? We've got some super exciting announcements this year for NAB. So we've got two new products, two new connected products. One of them is for the Ninja 5 and Ninja 5 Plus. So this is the module of modules. This is the accessory, which pretty much has everything in it. Everything? It's a nice integrated design. Yeah. It has the uh, SDI port, 12G SDI. It has the air glue sync. So this is the long range wireless sync for time code, metadata exchange between units, and it has Bluetooth, for also for sync and control. We have a Giga Ethernet and we have Wi-Fi 6. So this, this adds functionality that we're already used to with the Ninja, uh, and allows this to be a connected device, a cloud device, which allows us to go to a whole heap of new products and services with the Atomos Cloud Studio that we've also launched at NAB. So that's great. That's amazing, actually. How, how, how can you get that, all of that in just such a small box? It's unbelievable, no? It is. It's incredible, isn't it? And of course, it, it's so integrated. It's, it, it looks like a complete product, even though it's a module, which is perfect because, of course, you end up with, with all of our existing hundreds of thousands of Ninja users can now be transported into a whole new workflow. Instead of launching a, like, a completely new well, monitor, for example, you're yeah. basically doing this. Yeah, but we actually did launch a new monitor as well. So oh, really? exactly the same functionality we have now with the Shogun Connect, building on the existing heritage of the existing Shogun lineup. This has all the same functionality with the Wi-Fi 6, the Giggy Ethernet, the AirGlue timecode sync, all built in into one product with a super bright seven inch 2000 nit screen. So we have got an all in one solution but we can still bring our existing Ninja customers in on the same journey. Can I touch it? Of course you can. Ooh, Ooh that's nice. Oh, this one's nice as well. Brilliant. <laughs> so tell me, because you probably didn't come up with these types of connected devices if there wasn't some kind of cloud service attached to it. Yeah, exactly. So what we're doing with all the cloud services, and we've, we've got Atomos Cloud Studio, which is a suite of cloud services that you can hook into from this device. So we've just launched as a Frame.io Camera to Cloud partner for the show. We directly opposite them on their booth. They've got a booth directly opposite. And this is, this is the Camera to Cloud set up here. So either of our new connected devices can be a, the portal to Camera to Cloud via Atomos Cloud Studio. Now I'll explain what that means. So what that means is, both of our products now have the capability of being able to record two files. So they can record in simultaneously, they can record a high res hero file and a lower res proxy file. The beauty of that is that, that is, we're recording that locally on the device. So we get matching time code, we get matching metadata, we get matching file name. We then, we've got an example here. So on, on this setup, we're connected, this device is connected to Atomos Cloud over Ethernet. We've gone onto the web portal for Atomos Cloud and hooked it in with Frame.io project. We can now record a clip on here. Let's say we record you <laughs> for a couple of seconds. Yeah. There we go. That's now going up from, from, this cam from, from the camera up through the Atomos Connect on the back of the Ninja, straight to the cloud, Atomos Cloud, handshaking with, with uh, camera to cloud. And now we're here. It's now appeared on the timeline in frame. That's me. So in frame IO, that's you. That clip has already gone up and been processed. And of course, in NLE, let's go see Wes. So Wes, hey, you know how to do this in what, an NLE? I sure do. Let me show you. Let's look in Final Cut Pro. So Paul had that clip that he uploaded to frame and it's already appeared in my workflow extension in Final Cut Pro. So I can just drag this into my event in Final Cut. Final Cut's gonna download that file directly from the cloud. And now I can just drag this into my timeline. I'll select my clip, put it in my timeline. And now I'm editing with that proxy from the Ninja directly in Final Cut Pro. 
And so I can make all my editorial decisions with those proxy files while we're still shooting. So the time savings is just incredible. So you could be editing while I'll be still shooting. Absolutely. While they're still shooting, I could be editing. Other people could be looking at the clips, making comments, approving shots, or even rejecting shots. So it really saves a lot of time. And we can even give feedback back to the production so they can make changes while they're still shooting. So it really saves a lot of time, plus gives us a lot more options. So what about the high and files then? So right. What so happens? Once I'm done editing with the, the proxy files and I want to get back to the high res files, I'm just going to take the SSD off the back of my Atomos device, plug it into my Mac, and I'll just imp basically do a relink inside of the editing system. So depending, no matter if you're using Resolve or Premiere or Final Cut Pro, there's no problem. You can just relink those high res files into this, the timeline that was previously used in the proxy files. All your editing decisions are preserved. So it just doesn't, there's no loss in quality, no, no loss in time, huge time savings and really speeds things up and you still get that high quality edit in the end. And what about those awful sync, async, synchronized stories that you sometimes hear in productions? Is that still a thing with Camera to Cloud? Oh, with Camera to Cloud, everything is so much more communicative and so much more fast that you don't have any problems going from post, from production into post. Everybody's in communication, working well together, collaborating in new ways. It's a fantastic way to work. And that's me. So thanks, Paul. That was great. Bass, we haven't finished. We haven't finished. That's just like part of the story. So we've got Camera to Cloud, Frame Camera to Cloud, launching with that same device, same connectivity. We then can go to any of your streaming platforms at the same time. So that's the whole power of having the Atomos Cloud Studio, because it means you can hook in to Camera to Cloud. You could next day you could hook up to YouTube, Facebook Live, Twitch, using the same same hardware. But there's one more thing I've got to show you that's going to blow your mind. Come on. All right, all right. So it's a technology preview with the Atmos Cloud Studio. We've got our friends at Mavis who we've partnered with. I'm going to, this is going to blow your mind. I'll introduce you to Phil. So Phil, you're going to blow my mind. Yes, I am. This is live cloud production. The whole thing that you're seeing here is running in the cloud. In fact, it's running it in uh, the cloud in California. It's an AWS system, actually, that we're running on. Um, but don't let that bother you because you don't have to know. All you have to know is that what I'm going to say you do here is I'm going to cut a camera. As soon as I cut a camera, I'm going to send a message to the cloud. The cloud is going to package it up, do the cut, package it up again, compress it, send it back down here, and then you'll see the result here, and it happens this fast, like that. It's like magic wait, wait, because wait, 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 it wait. is magic. I didn't see it. Do you want to say it again? It was. It's so fast. It is so fast. This can't be cloud. This is absolutely cloud. 100% cloud. This, I cannot, people say, oh, could I run it locally? No, you can't run it locally. I don't want to run it locally. It runs in the cloud. And the point about running in the cloud is it's so easy to do. You don't have, you don't have any setup. You don't have to think about it. You literally just push the button, go, and it sets your show up for you. It, I mean, it's amazing, and I know how it works. I'm sorry, can you show it one more time? I, I, I still can't believe it. Right, watch this very carefully. I'm going to cut. Ready? Cut. Oh, I missed the button. There we go. Let's do that again. I'm going to cut and cut. So why is there two? So, right, we have two iPads. We have uh, currently these two are running exactly the same show. They're mirroring each other. They are both connecting to the cloud completely independently of each other. This means that between them now is just a bit of gap of air, but there could be a gap of hundreds of miles. This can be totally and utterly remote from each other because everything, if you look at the diagram of our cloud here, everything connects to the cloud. The cloud is just in the middle. Everything is remote by its very nature. So it's all remote. Now you want to get your camera. Here's the camera. You want to connect it. So we use one of our connect modules here. This is actually the Shogun Connect. It's really nice. It's got all the connectors built in. It's got the network connected on the back. I'm plugged into the wire, uh, wireless today. Oh no, not plugged into the wireless, I'm plugged into the wired because it's a you know conference center. There is no wireless, it doesn't work. But it goes out here into the cloud. This is what you need to be a now live camera contribution uh, person into a live show. Totally in sync. It's got the sync module on the back, which means all the cameras are going to be in sync automatically. There is no reason why you turn up to a gig with four cameras and one or two of them are out of sync. It will literally just do it automatically for you. And it means you can also talk to the director. You plug the headphones in, literally talk to the director. You've got tally. It just works. And all you need is one of these, and then you are a camera that is going to be able to contribute into the show like this. Now, if you want to watch it, we can watch it wherever you like. There's a TV over here. This is an Apple TV. As I'm cutting on here, you can see it going around. Look, I'll do a nice, I'll do a cheeky mix on here. Ooh, like that. And you should be able to see that. 
same thing happening on the Apple TV at the same time. And that is just because of super low latency. Um, that is that is down to the special and bespoke protocol that we have produced to do this. Because what we wanted to do was be able to get stuff super, I mean, we can get down to a frame get, getting uh, over the internet because we want to do it over the open internet. We don't want any special cables, we don't want any special setup. One button to push to set the show up. It's very, very simple to connect. You don't have to worry about IP addresses or server addresses or anything like that. It just works. And what I really like is that this is going to take live production, totally democratize it and put it in the hands of everybody. That's what I think. My mind is blown. Excellent.